Welcome back, everyone. I'm Chantal Day, the reporter here for our weather here at TV45. And I'm here to go over our last little bit here of Magnetic Mayhem, my special report on the recent mass deaths of all the animals. I'd like to pick up right where we left off. Now, as I said, mass animal deaths aren't unheard of. In fact, in the last few years, it's almost seemed common, just not so many at once. Now, if you recall, in March of 2009, 87 whales and dolphins beached themselves on the coast of Western Australia. And what's alarming about this is that that was the fifth mass beaching in a five-month time frame, and almost 500 whales died during that time. Now, these mammals that live underwater rely on our magnetic field for their navigation more than any of the other animals. So this should have been a precursor or first clue to say that something was definitely going wrong or is there's some type of disruption with our magnetic field. That was our first sign. Now, what we, we understand what some of the animals and some of the occupants here on Earth might be affected by it, but how is the Earth itself physically affected by this? Well, I decided to do some digging and I looked up and it turns out there's quite a bit of studies on it and they all end the same way. Electromagnetic activity and field disturbance is a direct precursor for earthquakes. In fact, approximately one hour to one week or after electromagnetic field disturbance, there, will, there is an earthquake, big or small. Now, we know that earthquakes, especially under the pressure of water, can release large fatal amounts of gases, methane gas even, into our atmosphere or worse, into a large body of water. In the water, it's a lot more fatal because there's not as much oxygen in the water. So I also found several studies about the effects of methane gas on marine life. And the first thing to mention here is the fact that it deals death so swiftly to the marine animals. And it can quickly penetrate into the gills and destroy the main functional systems. Even if small amounts leak into the water, it is still fatal. And now what's interesting to me is the fact is that these fish affected in Arkansas were drumfish. Now, drumfish are special. They are given this name because they have special swim bladders that resonate sound. Now, I think it's pretty appropriate that they would be the first to wash to shore and that they would be the first fish to react immediately. Well, what am I getting at here? Well, the bottom line is, is that all of these things are in part caused by the magnetic field and are ultimately causing the deaths of these animals. In fact, in August of 2010, NASA had to completely rescale the effects of solar activity because it is so active. Until the sun woke up, we really had no idea what the effects of this very active sun would have on our magnetically weakened state. And what we do know is that the last few weeks have her heralded severe solar activity, with as many as three coronal whole speed streams at once sending solar wind and causing the Earth to be almost at a constant state of geomagnetic disturbance. This in turn causes huge fluctuations in our magnetic field. You can go to the USGS websites yourself and look up this information as well as um, for electromagnetic and um, earthquake information is at the USGS websites. Now if you look in there the last week or so we've had more than three spikes of electromagnetic energy and all of these spikes, a lot of these spikes are completely bottoming them out where there's absolutely no magnetic field whatever, whatsoever. So a bird that's flying through an area where there is absolutely no magnetic field would literally have no form of navigation. It would go flying into cars and buildings, the ground, and obviously it would break its beak, its bone, and back a lot of the things that are showing up with these birds. And they were just flying into everything. So that would definitely explain why they can't see where they're going and why they're flying into everything. Now. Um, I decided to do some digging to see what electromagnetic energy was going on on December 1st, January 1st, and you guessed it, as it turns out, there was a slight bumping up and down in the electromagnetic field on that day, and then, amazingly enough, when I looked in the USGS Earthquakes Department and decided to see what earthquakes had happened, on January 1st, First, at 12.49 a.m. Universal Time, 6.49 p.m. local time, there was a 1.7 magnitude earthquake in Arkansas. And the epicenter of this quake was directly in between where the fish washed up and where the birds washed up. And the earthquake was only about 2.9 miles deep, so it's perfect for releasing um, toxic gases such as methane into a nearby water, river or into the atmosphere. And that would kill all drum fish um, literally within minutes. Now, the birds would be noticed right away because they're immediately affected by the magnetic field. It takes time for these fish to wash up and marine life and larger bodies of water would take longer to wash to shore. So this also explains why all the birds and fish weren't affected. 
Field fluctuations happen sporadically in localized areas, not everywhere at once. And I would also like to point out that the field does have an effect on human behavior as well. You could ask any police officer if there is a kick up in the notch of human behavior come a full moon. Now, during a full moon, the Earth is right between the moon and the sun, so both enter our geomagnetic field. And during a new moon, the moon sits between the sun and the Earth and is, is the furthest away from our geomagnetic, geomagnetic field. So it is likely that the moon's placement actually impedes or amplifies the geomagnetic pull of the sun and the Earth's geomagnetic field, making it stronger or weaker. Remember that the lunar month, 29.5 days, is approximately the same length of time as the full rotation of the sun. And samples brought back from the Apollo flights show evidence of strong magnetic fields in the rock, in the lunar rock, and researchers believe that this material could cause magnetic shift when the moon is, passes through our tail, which is behind our magnetosphere, our magnetic tail, geomagnetic tail, as it happens during a new moon. Now, it is interesting to note that on December 21st of 2010, we did experience a full moon lunar eclipse, and then not even, like two weeks later, we, on the 4th of January, we experienced a new moon solar eclipse. So I'm just, you know, would be a little bit interested to know if any of these recent acts of violence could possibly be in part influenced by the electromagnetic activity pushing the human emotional body to its furthest point. Um, it isn't my intention today here to uh, put any state of fear in anyone. In fact, please don't go out in your yards and pitch up those aluminum foil tents. That's not what this is about. I want to encourage awareness in people, and I, I want you to have your own theories and your own opinions, and I don't want you just to adopt mine. What I'd really like you to do is to go out there and investigate for yourself and see um, if this is the case, and have your own opinions outside of the mainstream media based on solid facts and information, facts which I got at the NASA Science News, I got at the USGS websites, our SDO at websites, NOAA websites, and many others as well. And if you would like any copies of my reference material, you can email me at info at klhu.tv, and I will be happy to give you my reference list or comments or questions or anything else. You feel free to message me there. Now, like I said, I'm not a rocket scientist, and this information is available at your t fingertips. So hopefully you guys will take that initiative to go out there and do that. In the meantime, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time.